But ultimately, this is what Jesus is after. He is after you and I making him the centerpiece of our lives. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus, is that Christ is the center of your life. How many know, those of you who are followers of Jesus, would declare yourselves to be such, that our jobs should not be the centerpiece of our lives? Amen? That was weak. Our jobs should not be the center of our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our possessions should not be the center of our lives. Amen? Amen? Our hobbies should not be the center of our lives. Amen? Amen. Our recreation should not be the centerpiece of our lives. Amen? Amen? Now I'm going to step on some toes. Our families should not be the centerpiece of our lives. Amen? Amen. Those children and grandbabies should not be the centerpiece of our lives. Amen? Amen. They're sweet sinners, but not the centerpiece of our lives. Jesus Christ is the center of our lives if we are a follower of him, but that's only if we've declared him to be Lord. But the religious leaders of his day declared him to be a liar, inauthentic, incredible, uh, unbelievable, lacking credibility. Verse number 22 says this, that the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, he is possessed by Beelzebub. Now, there's a debate textually on whether or not this should be translated Beelzebub or Beelzebel. Beelzebub meaning Lord of the Flies. That refers back to uh, the agricultural reality of swarms of locusts who would eat crops, who would destroy even cattle. And for uh, an agrarian society, that would be seen as an ultimate enemy, a work of the devil. And Satan was often referred to as the Lord of the Flies. Or Beelzebel, which is Lord of the Bells, Bell worship being the greatest and most significant idol worship of the Canaanite people, the people surrounding Israel. And he would have been, Satan would have been known as a Lord of the Bells, this chief of all demons. But either way, what becomes very clear upon a little bit further reading is that what they were trying to claim is that Jesus was not a man sent by God, nor was his miracles, the many good works, the many miracles that he had done among them, motivated by God. But no, they said, by the prince of demons, he cast out demons. What do you think about his miracles? What do you think about his teachings? Are they the word of God or the word of the devil? This has been picked up not only by teachers in his generation, but I can name you many, many books that are written by atheists of our day, like Christopher Hitchens, who wrote the book, God, uh, uh, God, uh, God is Not Good, in which he argues that God is a moral monster and that Jesus should be deemed as such as well, because his morality often is out of step with ours. This is a theme that is carried on to our day. What about you? Do you agree with the scribes and the Pharisees? I hope not. You see, what Jesus did, the first thing that he does for them and for many of us in order to compel us to come to him is he challenges our religious assumptions. They had so many bad and false religious assumptions it would take me hours to enumerate all of their bad and false religious assumptions. And by the way, as an aside, it would take me days to enumerate all of our false religious assumptions. You know, the false things that we try to mix into Christian faith, stuff that we got from memes or from social media posts or tweets. Be careful if your th theology primarily comes from tweets. There's something dangerous about that. What we believe about Jesus should come from what he said about himself in the word.